1.3b, exponents and order of operations. Exponents on negatives. Exponents can only affect what they are directly attached to. Below we will look at two examples of what we mean by attached to. In this first example, you can see that the parentheses are holding the negative 5 and the 5 all together into one unit. The 2 is outside of this unit and therefore applies to all things within. It is said that the 2 is attached to the entire negative 5. Therefore, the base is the entire negative 5 which means we are going to repeat the entire negative 5 two times. In this case, we would therefore have negative 5 times negative 5, and since a negative times a negative is a positive, we would result in a positive 25. In a case that looks very similar, we have negative 5 squared, but without parentheses. If you see in this example, the 2 is only directly attached to the 5. Therefore, the 2 only applies to the 5, meaning that only the 5 is the base. This means that only the 5 is repeated twice. This leaves you to wonder what to do with the negative that was out front. It just goes directly in the front of this problem. This therefore results in a negative 5 times a positive 5, which results in a negative 25. As you can see in this example, if there are not parentheses holding the negative with the number to make it the base, then it cannot be included in the replication. In the second example, you see there are no parentheses, and therefore the exponent is only attached to the 5 and not the negative. The negative, therefore, cannot be repeated and must just be transferred to the front of the problem. In example one, we once again see an example of a negative number with an exponent. In this problem, we see that it shows negative three to the fourth. We must first identify whether the exponent is attached to the negative or not. Since there are no parentheses, the four or the exponent only applies to the base of 3. This means that only the 3 is being replicated. The exponent says to replicate this 3 four times. We therefore write out 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Remember, you must transfer the negative to the front of the problem. In this case, we now work two numbers at a time. Negative 3 times 3 results in a negative 9. We then bring down all pieces that have not been solved. Next, we have negative 9 times 3, which results in a negative 27. We bring down the final 3 as it has yet to be included. We now have negative 27 times 3, which results in the answer of negative 81. Therefore, negative 3 to the fourth results in the answer of negative 81. Example 2 shows negative 2 to the sixth. Once again, we must determine whether the negative is included or not. 
since the negative is inside of the parentheses that the six is outside of, the exponent does apply to the negative. This therefore results in negative two being repeated six times. Once we have expanded it out to show that negative two has been multiplied six times, we then can begin to solve. The first two numbers being negative two times negative two, which results in a positive four. We then bring down all of the problem that has yet to be solved. Next, we have four times negative two, which results in negative eight. Once again, we bring down all portions of the problem that have yet to be solved. In the next step, we have negative eight and negative two, which results in a positive 16, bringing down the two negative twos that have yet to be used. Next, we have 16 times negative two, which results in a negative 32, and we bring down the final negative two. Finally, we do the last two numbers, which are negative 32 and negative two, and since a negative times a negative is a positive, this results in an answer of positive 64. Therefore, the answer to negative two to the sixth is 64. As you saw in the two examples above, you must identify whether or not a negative is included in the repeated multiplication. To know if the negative is included, it must be inside of the parenthesis. The negative is not included if there is not a parenthesis.